What is up guys? Today is a huge, huge night for Canadian football as the Canadian men's national team is playing the US men's national team at BMO Field in the CONCACAF Nations League. Now, I'm going to the game, I got a ticket, I am so hype, I have been waiting years and years and years to go to a Canadian men's national team game and I finally got the chance to go tonight and to probably what is possibly the biggest game the Canadian men's national team has ever played on home soil. Definitely the biggest game they've ever played in Toronto. There is possible World Cup qualifying repercussions to the result of tonight's match. If Canada wins, that might be enough to move them up in the FIFA World Rankings to the top six in CONCACAF and get them into the hex. That is huge for us. Also, a win gives us a real solid shot at coming in first place in our group in the Nations League. And just to get to the Nations League final, especially for Canada, would be such a huge accomplishment. So there's so much going on tonight. It's going to be a fantastic game. I'm going to be giving you guys a little taste of the atmosphere in the arena. Then coming back here for a debrief. Here's a little clip of what it's like at the game, and I'll see you in a bit.
that game, I would have been so happy with even a draw. But Canada beat the United States 2-0 for their first win against the U.S. since 1985. That game was just amazing. The atmosphere was absolutely fantastic. I'm not going to lie, that might be one of the greatest games in terms of just on-field performance and atmosphere, just all combined, I have ever been to. The supporter section was great. They were going at it the entire game. Even the regular crowd, not in the supporter section, I don't think I've seen that much energy from a crowd ever. Every little chance the whole crowd was getting on their feet. Every time Alfonso Davies made a rush, everyone was just like getting all excited. You could hear everyone was like on the edge of their seat about to jump up. It was just a very, very energetic crowd, a very enthusiastic crowd. One of the greatest match experiences I've ever witnessed. And the Canadian players just watching the energy they had and the enthusiasm they had in this game. The reaction after the Cavallini goal by the entire Canada bench, by the entire Canada team, was just incredible to see. It's incredible to see it when a team is more into it than the fans, when the team is more excited about the crazy upset that's happening than the fans are. The players were enjoying that moment just as much as we were in the stands, and it was just fantastic that the energy from the from the stadium and from the players seemed to be flowing into each other, and it was just something else. And then now the U.S. fans, I was very excited to see how many of them showed up. I don't think I've ever seen that many away fans at BMO Field before. They were very into it at the beginning of the game, but given the performance that the States had and just Canada's just grip on the game and the fact that Canada very early on said this is going to be ours and just took it, that United States group quieted down real quick and it's incredibly unfortunate to see that but just the energy that the Canadian team played with compared to the US team I thought was just huge and just from the home team perspective this game had so so much energy and it's great that all those US fans came up to come and watch this game and you could tell that they wanted to go insane and be loud and crazy but just the US team on the field did not allow them to do that they kind of stuff took the energy out of their own fans with their own play the Canadian team jumped right on that, the Canadian fans, we jumped right on that, and we made BMO Field a fortress. Now talk about the game real quick. Mark Anthony K goes down really early on with an injury. He used to get subbed off for Liam Frazier. Now, Liam Frazier, I like him. I like seeing him as a eventual Michael Bradley replacement at TFC, but having him playing in a national team game against the United States that might have been a real little quick I was kind of scared when that uh, when that move had to happen really unfortunate that K got hurt he would have been huge to have him play this entire game but Frazier he was a little shaky at times he had some mistakes but he had some really good defensive plays he had a couple tackles on Pulisic which for him is just punching way above his uh, his weight. I thought he played very well. The team as a whole was just fantastic. Uh, John Herdman came out and he decided to play a two striker formation to start with David and Davies, obviously playing a very counter attacking formation because you've got those two just complete speed demons up front and they caused the US defense so much trouble right off the bat. Davies was making run after run after run. David had some fantastic chances. I don't know how he didn't score like two or three goals. And when this game went into the half tied 0-0, I was quite worried because it's those types of halves when you're the underdog team like Canada was, where when you perform and have a half like that and then you don't score, usually it comes back to bite you. But going to the second half, Canada just kept it going, they kept the momentum rolling. Eventually, at the 63rd minute, Alfonso Davies got the goal to put Canada up 1-0. It wasn't a very pretty goal, it was a complete and utter mess of a scramble, but Davies hit it in. And Alfonso Davies, after having not scored for Canada since the 2017 Gold Cup, now has two goals in his last two games in the Nations League. So, man's back to scoring, which is... Such a huge thing for this national team. I mean, Jonathan David and Lucas Cavallini have been fantastic in scoring when he hasn't been. But now if you got Davey scoring a lot of David and Cavallini, this offense is just 
something that cannot be stopped. And then shortly after that goal, John Herdman subbed off Davies and David in favor of Hoylet and Cavallini. Now, this move is very weird because why would you take your two elite young attacking players off and replace them with two other attacking players when you're winning? And I think it makes sense to me because Hoy Light is more of a midfielder, he's better defensively, you want to clog up the midfield more, and then Lucas Cavallini is just a physically tougher player. After Canada went up 1-0, that game I think had potential to become really a war, it was a very rough one going into that, there was like a lot of little skirmishes, close calls to fight starting, and I think just taking those young guys out, you don't want to risk them in an environment, especially like they're young, they're really emotional, you don't want to risk them in that sort of emotional game, risk them getting red carded and missing the next game in the United States, which is going to be very, very important, or possibly them getting injured. So putting Lucas Cavallini in there, he's a very tough player, he can handle that sort of game. Junior Hoylet just is a more responsible player defensively when you're holding a 1-0 lead. I think that that was a good call. Maybe keep Davieson and just sub David out for Cavallini and then move Davies back a bit would have also worked, but I understand, I think, why John Herdman did that. Then after that, we had a bit of a period where the U.S. was pushing, trying to get a goal, some very rough tackles. Borean had to pick up Lorea and carry him away from a tussle a couple of times. Lorea was on the receiving end of a pretty bad uh, studs up tackle and he was just fuming from it. I actually like, I don't think I've ever had to see a goalie physically carry a player away from a tussle. And this game, despite the fact it was Canada, USA had a classic CONCACAF feel, the ref just losing control of the game as it went on. This is CONCACAF refs, man. There just seems to be a common theme with CONCACAF refs losing control of these sorts of games and then seemingly be confused as to why they lost control of the game when really right early on we saw this physicality getting cranked up and then just kind of not really adjusting to it. Which, whatever, at least it's consistent across the region. It's not like there's a couple refs in CONCACAF that let things get more physical than others. This is a very common thing across all of CONCACAF that the refs allow games to get more physical than maybe they should be. But yeah, like the 80th minute to the 90th minute, the US was pushing and I was so, so nervous when I see, I don't think I've ever been that nervous really at a game. And then Lucas Cavallini scores in the 90th minute and pure euphoria takes over that everyone was jumping up and down their seats. It was absolutely insane. The player's reaction to that goal was just fantastic. That goal, was possibly one of the biggest goals in Canadian men's national team history. Just in Toronto to secure a win against the United States, secure us moving up into sixth place in CONCACAF in the world rankings, which right now puts us in the hex. That goal is just huge and will be remembered in Canada soccer for a long, long time. And yeah, all in all, that game just possibly the best performance I've seen the Canadian men's national team have. They were just, everyone was punching above their weight in that game. The defense, which I've criticized in the past, was fantastic. Derek Cornelius knocking balls out of the air when the US is crossing it in, he was just world class there, especially considering the caliber of players he was going up against. They pretty effectively shut Pulisic down. Especially considering the main guys who were going up defending against Pulisic were Liam Frazier and Richie Larea. They were just absolutely fantastic in stopping him. Uh, I saw a couple times where like Larea was trying to let the ball roll out when Pulisic was right behind him and Pulisic just taught him a lesson in like, no, that ball's not going out. But Besides a couple little bobbles here and there, they were just fantastic in shutting him down. I don't know why Greg Berhalter subbed Pulisic out of that game. For Paul Ariola when the US was down, that's such a bizarre call in my opinion. But, I mean, if the US is going to be mismanaged and we get slightly easier wins because of that, I am all for it. And yeah, it was just all around an absolutely incredible game. But, one more thing. A little off topic here, but I saw a lot of people were complaining about how this game was not on national television, and yes, it should have been, but a lot of people were blaming One Soccer for the fact that this game is on national television, They're like, oh, it's on One Soccer because they just have it. Now, I have seen many sources for this, and 
many people, enough people have been talking about it that I do believe is true, is that one soccer, yes, they bought the rights to Canadian national team home games and then they bought the rights to the entire Nations League in Canada, but they offered this game to CBC, Sportsnet, and TSN all for free, and none of them took it. And people are saying, oh, it's one soccer's fault that this game wasn't on one of those TV channels. But if that is true, and one soccer would have let these channels take it for free, if it wasn't for one soccer, this game would not have been broadcast anywhere in Canada at all. So all of you on Twitter complaining about one soccer ruining the development of the Canadian national team, stop. Do you really think that it's in one soccer's best interest to not grow the Canadian national team's profile because the better the Canadian national team does and the more people that follow it, the more people who will subscribe to One Soccer to watch the Canadian national team. Simple as that. Don't blame One Soccer for not trying to raise the popularity of soccer in Canada. Blame TSN and Sportsnet. Blame TSN specifically for rather broadcasting a replay of the Ukraine-Portugal Euro Cup qualifier on TSN 1 and 5 from earlier that day than the Canada-United States CONCACAF Nations League match that has World Cup qualifying repercussions for Canada because of CONCACAF's dumb FIFA World Ranking thing. But all in all, just a fantastic match for the Canadian men's team. Just a night and a match to remember this one, I think, is one for the history books. So yeah, that does it for this video. If you like it, hit like. If you want to see more of my stuff, hit subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, link is down below in the description, and I will see you next time.